Hello, this is Matthew Miller from the ZDNet Mobile Gadgeteer and Smartphones and Cell Phones Blogs. Um, I've been keeping a very close eye after attending uh, CTIA a couple weeks ago on the Quick Office for iPhone application when it would come out since I had a chance to test it out. So I've been keeping an eye on iTunes just about every other day and finally this evening saw that Quick Office had appeared in the iPhone App Store. It's uh, the full version is available for $19.99 and I believe you can also find the, the Quick Sheet and Quick Word and Quick Office files all separate applications. So I want to take a quick little look through, uh, through this application on my iPhone and I guess the first thing is I will show you. So there's the, uh, the desktop, just kind of their website. But I want to show you how to get app, uh, files onto the iPhone. So let's go over here and let's pull out my iPhone. And I'll go ahead and turn off the light so we get through some of that. So let's just go back. Okay, so there's the application icon there. Quick Office. Tap on that. It's going to start Quick Office on my iPhone. Now, as you can see here, there's a couple of different ways you can uh, get access to your documents. And um, let's see, if I tap on the suitcase, there's just the toolbox that has some things. If I say edit, that's where I can add uh, mobile me accounts. Now, I don't have an account, so I can't show you this and how it works, but you could add an account, you can add a public folder that in your existing account and transfer files back and forth. And that's probably the best way to do it, really, uh, as I'll show you. Uh, however, I don't have mobile me, and it requires mobile me, so that won't happen. If you, I'll, I'll go in a few minutes to the, on Ibaka 3G, which is my iPhone, because that'll show you what's on the phone itself. But the first one here is Wi-Fi desktop. So what this is, is it gives you an IP address. Now, you have to have your iPhone connected to the same wireless network as your PC or Mac and I've got my Mac here with uh, Safari so uh, I've got the IP address that's listed there now in the browser so let's uh, hit a refresh and there we go now the one thing I learned so let's see back up the camera a little bit here so you can see the full actually maybe if I minimize this uh, it doesn't help that much Let me just uh, resize the browser a little bit so you can see everything in the browser. There we go. So one thing you have to remember and you have to do is this has to, you have to keep your iPhone on. Um, if it goes, if it shuts off or the application goes off, you lose the connection. So, um, so here, as you can see on this side over here, are the or the uh, documents that I have on my iPhone. If I was to tap on that, it would just give me the file info on this side. Let's say I want to put a file on there. I go upload files and a little box appears here where you can add a file. So I go to a file, there's a, there's a PDF document there. Say so I want to add that PDF document and it just goes through and you can add all the files you want. And then you would say upload. When you do upload, you'll see on the iPhone, it's uploading the user manual. And if we watch on the screen here, it will appear in yellow. So there in yellow appears the last file that I did it. So, the way to do it locally is to have a, a Wi-Fi connected browser and your iPhone and Wi-Fi and transfer files back and forth. And that's all good and everything else. However, there's no way to uh, do this via email, which is what I really want to do because when I'm out, with, out in the road with my iPhone, I need the connection, um, and I have a connection, you know, with with my iPhone and the office and I want documents emailed to me or email them back. Now the website and the iTunes description says that you can email documents from the application. However, I have not been able to find that anywhere and it may be something that either I'm missing or is not yet in the version and may be coming soon. Okay, so now let's go to uh, look at the application. So we tap on, let me go ahead and I'll just close my PC so it's not distracting there. There we go. Back to the iPhone. So I tapped on uh, the, my iPhone. Now this is the local directory. So you, if you tap over here on the tools, you can actually tap on each one. You can move them or delete them. 
you can actually move to custom folders and things like that. I created one here, personal, if I tap on that, so it goes, you can create folder structure within, uh, within here. Let's see, it doesn't do landscape on that view. Down here is where you have uh, the new folder, a uh, new Excel, a new Word doc, and a new text document. So let's just start with uh, with Word, and here's one that just to some Word document I have. It loads up, and it shows me the Word doc. Now I can dynamically zoom. It has the pinch zoom, just like the iPhone supports. It actually does support landscape and portrait. However, when you, <clears throat> as you can see, when you go to landscape, um, you can zoom, and I'll show you that dynamic zoom. But you can zoom, you can pinch in and out, kind of thing. But there's no more controls of uh, of what you see for the fonts and all that kind of thing. If you double tap, you do get the uh, the keyboard up here with the little uh, selector buttons, that kind of thing. So you can edit the document and do some of those things. You just can't do uh, what I'll show you here. So over jumping over here. See. Down below, we've got the uh, first icon, bold, italic, font color. If you tap font color, a little pop-up pops up. Bold, italic, font color, highlights, and font formats. Next one over is numbers. It gives it bullets or numbers. And I haven't seen how to switch to numbers. All I see is bullets. So I'm not sure how numbers work. Next one over is to tap and get the keyboard. And I'll show you something on the keyboard in a minute. Next one over is cut, copy, paste, delete, and then the last one is undo and redo. Okay, so let's let's just say I go to a word. Now, if I want to tap in on an area and get more zoom, if I their zoom is you tap and hold, it actually you can see that it zooms of that little word that it would do in uh, in other applications. It actually zooms in the whole page, so it should make it a little bit easier to move the cursor to where you want it to. If you double tap on a word, it gives you the selection bars. If I, I don't have a paragraph on this one, maybe a sentence. If I double, if I triple tap, it picks the whole sentence or paragraph. So double tap for a word, triple tap for the whole sentence. Okay. So let's say I wanted to just go down to the bottom of the document here. And select there, pop up my keyboard, and hit return a little bit. Okay, so if I wanted to write something, here we go. The cat. And as you can see, I'm misspelling, and it's not correcting. The autocorrect does not work in Word, which is huge in my book. Another thing, watch this. I tap Shift to get the first letter. You see what's happening there? It's all caps the single sh press the shift button switches it to all caps that may be something I could get used to but since I don't use it right now all the time that's another thing to have to learn and I really don't like that it doesn't have the predictive I mean that right there is, is fail in my book um, okay so that's word and a quick, quick quick word part of it and you can save it as you can say save as where you want to save it and then choose where you want to save it that kind of thing so let's go back, and I will do not save. Let's go back. Let's get, open up the spreadsheet. Well, as we can see there, I got nothing. All right, let's relaunch it again. On my device. There we go. So something like an ex expense planner. Loads it up. There we go. Again, portrait or landscape. And again, when you go to landscape, it's more for viewing than anything else because it does have some functions, but uh, it doesn't have uh, all of the bottom items, which we'll run through right now. Again, we tap this, bold, italic, font color, and cell background. If you want a different color for your cell background. Next one over is format, number formats. And as you tap them, you go into more specific details about what you want to do with those numbers and cells. Next one over is the different sheets that you can bounce through. So you can easily bounce through sheets. 
Next one is inserting columns, inserting rows, deleting columns, deleting rows, and do and undo. A couple other things you can do with this application is uh, if you were to tap on a col if you were to have a column, tap on a column. Where's it at? I'm trying to show it by okay there. As I set my finger down, you can move resize the columns as you want. Do the same thing with rows. Let me just zoom in a little bit. Tap on a row, and then you can see the arrow. I think you can see it up here below. So you can resize the rows and the columns pretty easily there. If you tap on the function, oops. If I was to tap on the function button here. That's where you can go into all your different functions, and there's several of them, many, many of them, and then if you actually need to know, oh, some of them will give you descriptions as well on uh, what those are. Okay, so that's kind of a look at the quick word and quick office. So right now, the limitations that I see it are the predictive text and word and the shift key, and then I see no ability to email or get these uh, sent back as attachments from an email. Other than that though, uh, at this point, it's, it's a pretty good application. It is $20 for the full-blown. Uh, I bought it already, and uh, I mean, I need this kind of application if I'm going to actually do work when I'm out and about with my iPhone, but I really need the email support as well. So that's a quick look at uh, QuickOffice for the Apple iPhone.